got it. Yeah. Before you start. <laughs> Hey everybody, David Williams here with St. Cards. Uh, my lovely bride is behind the camera. Hey. And we just wanted to take a little bit of time to share with you a bit about the 2020 collection for St. Cards. Uh, the big question that we often get is, wow, there's a lot, right? So where do we where do we start or, or how do we use these? And so what we hope to do uh, in the coming months is to release more videos from this very room. This is our dining room here where we play St. Cards almost every night. Uh, our kids have played hundreds of times, not only just to test, but we, we want to make sure that it's fun for them. And, and principally, that's why we make new expansions. Is that usually there's something that we would like to teach the kids. So we want to kind of do this from our dining room to yours kind of a thing. Um, so anyway, let's, let's dive in. I wanted to first talk through uh, something that I think Kim and I are, are very probably most excited about, I would say, is, is the quiz cards. And Kendall gets a lot of credit for these because initially, um, we were just going to put a picture of the saint that's featured in the base game on this, this side and then Kendall had the lovely idea of having a quote from the saint put on one side. But this is a way for you to test the knowledge uh, for yourself or for uh, the family in what facts they remember about the saints. Like here we've got St. Thomas Beckett. This is the exact picture that's on the St. Thomas Beckett saint card. So you could hold this up and uh, ask, you know, tell me about St. Thomas Beckett and they can say, uh, he's born in the 12th century and died in the 12th century, and each one of these facts has points that are associated with it. Uh, and then up here is the is the number of points that you can get. And so there's about five different quiz games that you can play with these. Um, you can uh, you know hold them up as flashcards, and they can say Thomas Beckett, and you can hand it to them. Uh, you know who's this? Saint Gertrude the Great, and hand it to them. Or you can um, have another game where you read read the back and say born in the 13th century, died in the 14th century. Feast month, November, Virgin. Oh, it's St. Gertrude the Great. And then you, you hand it to them. A lot of cool uh, games that you can play with them. But we also, I think the thing I'm most excited about too is just the devotional aspect to these where you can, on perhaps our feast day, or set it up uh, you know, at the, on the family prayer table and you've got a quote either from them or about them. Uh, to contemplate. So these are the new quiz cards. There's a lot of cool ways to play and they come with uh, some more treasure so that you can hand out treasure during the games and they've got uh, rules and instructions. So that's, Did you want to mention that they will be cut rounded off? Oh right, yeah. So thank you for calling that out. So these are actually the prototypes that we get before Saint cards are printed. Uh, and so these are actually, this is the very last step that uh, any of our sync cards goes through before we round off the corners. And so uh, these have already been cut, but yeah, these are bigger than what they're going to be. They're going to look like, like this when they're done, right? So this is the bigger area here, but uh, these are the prototypes, so that's why they're all squared off, but these will be rounded off. Next, enrichment cards. And each of these, by the way, comes with a really nice set and bag to keep, uh, keep everything in and, and kind of organize. Then we have the peach bag. And the peach bag comes with our brand new yellow diamonds that are worth 100 treasures each. You might say, well, why am I gonna need 100 treasures? <laughs> uh, well, because we have in the peach bag these enrichment cards uh, to emphasize what is being focused on with each of the facts and saint cards. So as an example, uh, we get the first through 20th century, and here you've got to look at time and what the church was doing in each century. So uh, one of the things we noticed when the kids were playing is, you know, they'd say 12th century, and they'd match something with the 12th century, so they could see that the saints were living in the 12th century, but we really didn't have a good way to teach what was going on then. So that's why we made Historia cards to kind of teach uh, all the different things that were happening around the world. But we wanted to also show everybody uh, what was going on in the church. So first century, the church begins her mission. Second century, the faith spreads in the Roman Empire. And then you get further on, you know, the church expands her mission in the sixth century, the conversion of Germany in the seventh century. So as they're playing the game, they can see, okay, this is what was going on in the church whenever this thing lived. Uh, so there's time cards uh, that are available. And this, uh, again, these are played with the game of St. Cards. Uh, if you've ever played like Ticket to Ride, uh, the, basically the way it works is you just draw three at the beginning of a game and then decide which one you're going to keep. And then the more uh, saints from the seventh century that you collect during the game, the more points you get. So let's say you've got three uh, saints from the seventh century, you would get 21 treasures. Uh, and then basically you just put it down and show that you've got three saints from that, from that century. And then we go into vocations, right? So saint cards, all the different colors are focused on different vocations in the church. A martyr, layperson, deacon, doctor. Uh, these are these are living witnesses, right? 
And so this is a this is a witness card where uh, if you collect martyrs or you collect virgins or perhaps uh, religious women or apostles, uh, the more that you collect, the more points that you get during the game. And then finally, there is the liturgy aspect. And as you all uh, know, I didn't know this whenever I came to the church. There are different emphasis that the church gives to each month. Uh, and there's a reason behind each emphasis, right? So in January, and this is the symbol for January, uh, it is the month of the holy name of Jesus. And so you have um, your beautiful Catholic art here to, to highlight this. And then of course, as you collect uh, cards from the month of January, you can, you can get a certain number of points. Uh, at the time of this taping, it's the month of the Holy Rosary. Uh, and so uh, there's a beautiful picture of Our Lady and St. Dominic uh, having a conversation about the spirit, this uh, powerful weapon that we have as Catholics. And so those are enrichment cards. They come with six um, hundred piece treasures. Uh, there's a lot more to talk about there. A lot of um, really cool math uh, that, my, uh, that my sister actually helped me out with to make sure that everything was fair. Um, with uh, with how many cards are worth how many points and all that kind of thing. So props to my to my sister Kate for that. Uh, but that is enrichment cards. And then we have uh, the purple game mat. And some of you have already seen this um, in some pictures, but here it is in real life. And again, this is the rubber back game mat. Um, this is in the Mendicant Order expansion. Uh, and it is uh, included there because this is, uh, well, it's going to feature 16 religious orders. We can't feature all of them, unfortunately, just because there's so many of them. But uh, you could argue that these 16 are at least a good start. We found with our kids that we were referring to, you know, Jesuits and Franciscans and Dominicans, and they didn't quite know what those were. Um, there's a lot of different term, terms uh, that are flying around here in the Williams household. And so we wanted to formalize that by teaching them about um, the religious orders. Uh, we start off in history, right? We have the Benedictines, which was founded in 529. We make our way to the Camaldolese, the Cartusians, uh, the Cistercians, the Carmelites. Of course, this is where all of the mendicant orders begin. You know, so we have their Trinitarians, our Franciscans, our Mercedarians, our Servites. And then even to uh, within the last two or three hundred years, we've got our Passionists, our Redemptorists, and our Salesians, right? Um, for me, as a convert, I mean, we've been in the church now 10 years. This is an area that I did not know a whole lot about uh, until we um, started started to put this together, which is kind of the whole reason why we made saint cards in the first place. And so this is an opportunity for us to get to know the saints that were from these orders. Uh, and there are some amazing men and women uh, that we should get to know that may not necessarily be the high profile saint that uh, we may you know, think of or celebrate on those big feast days, uh, but nevertheless lived uh, lives of, of purity and holiness. And so we wanted uh, to get to know them and we are now able to help you get to know them too, which is super exciting. So uh, all that to say with the Purple Game Map will come 53 cards from the mendicant orders uh, and so we have our Dominicans, our Carmelites, our Franciscans, and uh, a lot of, uh, I didn't know this, like St. Didicus of Alcala, as an example, is the saint that the city of San Diego is named after. His name is Diego or Didicus. Had no clue uh, who St. You know, uh, Didicus of Alcala was, uh, but for those of you from the city of San Diego, uh, you have a new saint card, right? Uh, so a lot of really cool um, uh, saints that uh, I've enjoyed getting to know that I'm really excited uh, for you to get to know. Our kids are really enjoying getting to know them. So those are uh, 53 cards and then you're going to get a gob of treasure as well uh, to go along with that set and a brown bag and a, and a, and a rule set. So um, this is St. Hyacinth of Poland. We've got uh, St. Nicholas of Tolentino, St. Felix of Beloy, uh, all sorts of um, amazing men and women who were in the mendicant orders. Okay, so this is a quick video within the video to talk about the new purple game mat. So what you do is you basically take the purple diamond side of the blue game mat and add the purple game mat to it and, and it basically adds, uh, adds to your, your play area here. And each of these orders adds a whole new dynamic to, to the game. So if you look at your hand right here, like I've got some Camaldolese, I've got Redemptorists, I've got a Carthusian, um, St. Hugh. And so in, every time I play, uh, I, I, I can decide if I want to play on the draw pile as normal here, or, or on the play deck, sorry. And then, uh, or I can play on the purple game mat. And in this case, it's, since it's a Carthusian, I would play it here. Um, and the Carthusians have a special um, uh, mechanic where you can, once you play one, you draw a card, and then whatever the difference in the centuries are, however many treasures you gain, 
and then you take an additional treasure and place it on the Benedictine spot. So the Camaldolese, the Carthusians, the Cistercians were all reforms of the Benedictine order. So whenever these are played, we add more treasure to the Benedictine space. So if somebody plays the Benedictine uh, anywhere on the game mat uh, or on the on the uh, draw pile, they'll get all these treasures. Uh, so every single order has its own little character or charism to help reinforce what these orders do in the life of the church. Carmelites, uh, if you would play Carmelite, uh, you, uh, you, know, you get five, then eight, then 12, then 17, then 23, then 30. So the more uh, Carmelites that you cloister here, uh, the more treasure you get. And so that helps to reinforce the, the cloister life of the Carmelites. Or like a, a Jesuit saint, if you place a Jesuit here, if you have a Pope in your hand, you get three extra treasures for every Pope you have. And then it allows you to actually go into the deck and find another Pope because the Jesuits have certainly, uh, in their origination in the 16th century, were, uh, were the right-hand men of the Holy Father. Or a Trinitarian will give you three different options because Trinitarian is three and so on and so forth. So every single order card that you play has its own function um, and it adds a whole new level of strategy to the game. But the biggest thing is it helps to reinforce what these orders do in the life of the church. And, and we found with the kids, whenever they're playing, they become all the more familiar with the symbols and what those symbols are associated with. I can point to this symbol uh, on a card now and the kids are picking up, okay, that's Augustinian, this is Passionist, so on and so forth. Uh, but then along with that, uh, the game mechanic helps to reinforce what these orders do in the life of the church. Now, back to the original video. And then we continue on with the, with the, uh, the whole order theme. Uh, by highlighting the clerics regular and the monastic orders expansion. So this is where you're going to run into Benedictines and Cistercians and Camaldolese and Carthusians. Uh, and here we have another 53 cards. And then the final two are um, the final four orders. This is the religious um, booster pack from 2020. It's got the Mercedarians, the Vincentians, the Passionists, and the Salesians. So that rounds it out. We've got six orders covered in the Dominican order expansion, another six in the clerics regular, and then uh, in the monastic uh, order expansion. And then we round out with uh, four, uh, four more orders. So in this expansion, uh, you've got a, a new Jesus card. And I love this Jesus card. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this picture before, but this is Christ in the wilderness, in the desert, uh, while he's fasting. Uh, and certainly looks like he could use some consolation. So uh, for those uh, monks or religious out there that are living a very secluded life of prayer, I feel like uh, that is so representative of the beautiful life that you lead and you are doing just what Jesus did. And then similarly on the other side uh, is a gorgeous uh, picture from Tissot of uh, Jesus uh, having that wonderful conversation with Mary Magdalene on the, on the morning of the resurrection, uh, which I think is so uh, indicative of, of the beautiful vocation to the religious life uh, that so many so many women uh, have, have answered the call to. So that's the Jesus card there. You can choose which side you want there. And then uh, we've got the wild cards. Uh, we've also got uh, St. Damien. We've got Mother Teresa. Um, of course, some great Salesians, uh, St. Dominic Savio, um, St. Uh, St. Raymond Nonatus, uh, the, the fantastic uh, Mercedarian who oftentimes is invoked for uh, for midwives or expectant mothers. So this is the St. Raymond that you might hear of in those circles um, and, and many more. So that is 36 cards there in the booster pack. And the last expansion, which we already actually have these cards rounded off, is the Where Two or More are Gathered expansion. And so this comes with six of the Amethyst treasures, which are worth 50 each. And this expansion is going to feature all the groups of saints. Um, some of you already have um, some of these 2x cards in your in your sets where you see the, the times two card. There's a really cool component. Yeah, I have one too here. Yeah, here's a Mars. Uh, really cool uh, component to this when you play one of these cards. Uh, you kind of get to, to play, you get to play two cards and get, get a lot more treasure. Uh, but this is really highlighting all of the groups of saints, the holy groups that we celebrate, the Dewey Martyrs. Uh, we've got uh, St. Simon and Jude, even though we've got the St. Simon card and the St. Jude card, this is the St. Simon and Jude card, which is worth, you know, you could get double the treasure by playing this. Uh, why are they together? Well, they share the same feast day, right? The St. Charles Luanga companions, uh, all sorts of really exciting uh, combinations of, of saints. So this is where we focus on the, the groups of saints. And that rounds it out. And, and hopefully that's enough to keep everybody busy 
for at least a year until we have a chance to talk to you about the Marian Apparition expansion uh, for next year. But there's plenty of fun there. And again, for us, you know, on, the, the thought process behind why we make what we make uh, when we do is really having to do with what, what do we feel like our kids are going to really enjoy right now. They're all growing up fast. We've got, you know, five to 15 and uh, what's going to bring them back to the table. They play this game lots of times just because, you know, they're, they're in the St. Cards house, right? So they have to anyway, you know, there's sometimes where we have to work and sometimes where we, where we play. Um, but what we like to watch is when are, when are they going to play on their own? Um, and you know, without you know us going through and trying to figure something new out, and and, and what's, what's exciting about this is that you know, Kendall and I are watching them play two, three, four times a day without us even asking. They're enjoying it that much, and so our hope is through some future videos and just kind of showing you the lay of the land and how to how to kind of um, work with these new sets uh, that this can be an encouragement for you all as we get to know our family in heaven. And, um, and then certainly continue to strive for holiness to be saints ourselves.